Uh, hello, I'm Brian Redzikowski from uh, Kettner Exchange. Throughout my career, it started out 15 years old, a bed and breakfast, and um, thinking about you know food and how it's presented and plated and all. Um, at that point, this was in the early 90s, it was pretty much about hot food, tasty food, and that's it, served on a, on a pretty much a beige plate. Um, so for a few, a few years of my career, I thought that was it. That was exactly how it's supposed to be, just fast food, whatever. Um, as long as it's hot, it goes out to the guests. Uh, it really changed, obviously, moving down to New York City. Um, one of the biggest things was at Le Cirque 2000, where I, st I staged there. And I started seeing these plates coming in, and I started seeing different plates for different dishes. Um, a lot of, it was obviously Le Cirque is a, uh, a circus-themed restaurant, so there was a lot of like the monkeys on the side of the dishes, gold-plated, different kind of like uh, panda bears and things like that. And I started seeing it being very whimsical and kind of fun. Um, so to the extreme of that is working at Joe Robichon for three years where you're pretty much dining in his, in his house. That's how you want to make it feel. So every plate had an underliner underneath. Um, it showed a story. It was pretty much like um, if you're having a shellfish dish, underneath it's gonna be water. It's gonna be uh, crustacean shells or something like that. And I really loved that. I really embraced that. I really thought that I could use that later on in my career. So fast forward to Kettner Exchange. And I'm not talking about every dish has to have that, but also I don't think that every dish should be on a white plate at all for here. You know, there should be a story told for some of the dishes. For example, we talked about chanterelle mushrooms. Like, where did chanterelle mushrooms come from? Like, where, where is it from um, in, the, in the forest? What grows around that, you know? Are there twigs around that? Is it uh, by a tree? What kind of tree is it? So, a matsutake mushroom, for instance, is from a pine tree. So how do we incorporate a pine smell into that or something with a pine or present it on a pine branch, maybe? So, you kind of incorporate that all into a dish. Kenner, we have uh, a lot of shared plates, family style plates, and I believe that's what food should be about. Um, I don't really get the entree thing where people are sitting down, it's one plate. Um, they're just focused on that one meal. I, I just feel like it's boring. I really can't relate to that. Feel like if you're at the restaurant it's not just about the food it's also kind of an hour and a half of your time um, you should be entertained a little bit as well
works really well here um, because we focus big time onto share plates and family style plates. Um, share plates it lets, the get, lets the guest kind of uh, create their own kind of like tasting menu as they go through. Different flavors, different experiences. Uh, one of the dishes that we do here is the hot rock. Uh, it's been on the menu since day one. It's literally a rock that we found. We heat it up. It's about 900 degrees. Uh, depending on the season and what were the garnishes for that day, we present it on a bed of salt, sometimes branches. If it's winter time with matsutake mushrooms, we'll present it with pine, um, different kind of rocks as well, flowers, thyme, rosemary, to kind of give the guest as it goes out to the dining room that you're finding this rock that's actually in the forest, you know, that smell, that aroma that's coming out. And you can cook your own beef on that as well. Um, gives the guests that interactive kind of like feel, um, the sizzle, the smell, everything like that in the dining room. So um, I try to do that as well. Some of the other dishes is like a, a Pig Mac. It's very, very traditional Cantonese style bun. We just put a little face on it as well. Um, staying very traditional, which I completely agree with. I respect the ingredients, but kind of put that whimsical kind of like little uh, twist onto it as well. I'll give the guests something to you know, smile about and all. So this is pretty much uh, basically how it starts. The inspiration starts for a dish. Um, it could be anything, walking uh, in a park, in the forest. I love the woods on the beach. Um, so for example, this is literally how it started. Um, either you take pictures out there, I do some sketching and things like that, but w coming into a rock and then obviously you see a rock, you see nasturtiums around it and things like that. Um, I just took another picture of some flowers and a twig on the back and all that. So from there, you just gather all this information. Um, and then I just do a little sketch, something very, very fast. Uh, but the flowers are on there and exactly how it's going to work. So from here, you just have the hot rock that we have. We find a rock that exact size as well, somewhere in the woods. Um, nasturtiums, if they're in season, I mean, it could be anything. A lot of times we put twigs, like you see in the background, a log. We'll put twigs underneath it as well. So kind of when you heat it up, it's like crackling and all. You kind of have that sound in it as well. Some flowers will stick on there, depending again, nasturtiums like we talked about again. Uh, maybe some other rocks that we'll use as well as we see over here. So kind of creates like that kind of like art, you know, onto a plate that's actually interactive for the guest. So this is our herb garden that we have over at Kettner. Um, so these things I use quite a bit every day, actually, um, depending on what they're, what they're growing for us and all. But there's always rosemary. It's very easy to grow. Um, I love the smell of it especially for the hot rock. So we'll throw some of that in there. Um, sometimes there's thyme growing. The mint I just stay away from, obviously, because it's, there's not mint in additional. But again, going back to the picture of like what it looks like, that um, a lot of times this one, you see the twig here, I like those twigs. So like we talked about. And then we just need, we'll get a little bit of a, just some extra for the bottom. Here's the plating for the hot rock that we do. Um, again, based off of that picture from the woods. So we kind of mimic like the ground. Gonna wanna put, it's kind of, this is just salt, a little bit of charcoal. So it mimics like that, that dirt and the gravel and all, the shell, where you know, might find the rock. And there are the mushrooms that we're using. These ones are gonna use chanterelle mushrooms. Some of the leaves that we're gonna use. The rosemary, obviously really good smell as well. But again, the purpose is to make it look like, like the forest, right? So it goes out to the guest with that smell. It's kind of like they're in the forest. Before we put the rock on, again, just look, make sure we definitely have like that forest kind of vibe, you know, the woods that you're gonna be finding the rock from and also the chanterelle mushrooms. So the next part in this is once you have that, the hot rock all ready to go, um, I like to present it with like this little setting right here. Um, you'll see something about it. You know, you have something that's like so uh, like 
barbaric, so like peasant-wise, right? So something so rustic, I should say. And then the finished product, when it gets uh, fully presented to the guest, um, as they finish it up, is something like so elegant, something so delicate. So it's something about that, you know? It's always been something that's so intriguing, like champagne and like fried chicken. So that's where the theory in, uh, came out about this plating right here, so. Um, we're gonna throw the rock on here now. And then, this is where all the smell comes out. The guests will be presented like this. So as the guest has that. Now you have that smell, you're smelling the rosemary. You have that smoke going on. The guest is then instructed to sear the beef on there. These are the chanterelles that we talked about. And there it is, and then the guest, obviously, if they want to flip it over, well done. They present it themselves. Just like that. And then again, bringing you back to the forest, a lot of greens, a lot of wild leeks. Kind of cover that up. I'm also a big fan of covering up a lot of it to kind of have like a mystery. Because I think the beef is not only the star here, I think the chanterelle mushrooms or the star as well. So it kind of gives the guests like they have to go through it, break into it, you know, like kind of like a present and all. Thanks for stopping by Kenner Exchange Kitchen. I um, hope you guys enjoyed the presentation. Um, I mean, as you can see, the first and foremost thing is flavor and um, the ingredient has to do with the talking, right? Um, but I just feel that there's obviously that little uh, area where we can push a little bit more and um, actually present food in a different elevated stance uh, while still respecting the ingredients. Enjoy.